Hi. Hi. We're the Flippin' Weekend. A mother-daughter duo upcycling furniture every Saturday and Sunday. This weekend, we transformed this into this. This furniture flip turned out exactly how we had envisioned. The ombre wood drawers create this modern twist on a vintage design. Keep watching, because we're going to show you step by step how we did it. A childhood friend was cleaning out his parents' attic and offered up some of these incredible pieces. We recruited some help to get them down the stairwell. And out of all the new treasures, this beautiful dresser set was by far our favorite. When we brought this set home, we saw we had a few challenges to deal with. First, the drawers were very sticky. We even had a hard time just getting them open. The hardware was outdated. This is the classic mustache drawer pull that you see on a lot of vintage pieces. The dressers also had a musty smell. This is likely from being stored in the attic for close to 30 years. And lastly, it had a broken leg, so we knew we needed to make a few repairs. Although there were a few issues, this set was a treasure. It's extremely rare to find a five drawer tall boy and a three drawer low boy matching vintage set. It also had unique carving. You can see these beautiful pillars all the way down. And the major jackpot is that this set is solid wood through and through. We can tell this because we can see the individual boards along the top, as well as we can see these solid wood drawers featuring mortise and tenon joints. We got to work on a vision. Many people ask us how we come up with our designs. We get a lot of inspiration from other YouTubers and Instagrammers, but we tend to work best by brainstorming ideas based on the unique features of each piece. We both agreed that for this set, a classic stained drawer with a creamy white frame would be beautiful, but we couldn't decide on a specific color. So we sketched the dressers with a variety of stains from light to dark to create an ombre effect on the drawers. Let's get started. We kicked off the project by disassembling and cleaning the set from top to bottom. We removed all of the hardware as well as the drawers. Now we typically use warm water and dish soap to clean the grit and the grime that's built up over the years. But this time around we use an all-purpose bleach cleaner for the inside frame and the drawers to help deal with the musty smell. We also left the drawers on our covered porch to air them out for a few days. A lot of people just quickly wipe down their piece before jumping into the fun parts of flipping. But look at the color of our water. There's so much buildup over the years that a thorough clean is one of the most important steps of this process. We're going to be painting the frame of this piece, so we only need to do a light sand to help the paint stick. We used 120 grit sandpaper and hand sanded the unique carvings, ensuring we got all of the hard to reach spots. We attached our shot back to the nozzle of our orbital sander to sand the rest of the frame. This will suck up all of the dust so it's way less messy. We continue to light sand the rest of the piece using 120 grit sandpaper. Once we were done sanding, we used a wet cloth to wipe down the set to remove any of the leftover sawdust. A trick we use to get into the crevices is to use a flat head screwdriver and wrap it in the cloth to get between all of the nooks and crannies. We want to make sure all of the sawdust is gone, or else it leaves little bumps and imperfections in your paint. One of the only repairs we had to do on these pieces was to fix the broken legs. One of the legs was a simple glue and secure, but the second was a bit trickier because we didn't have the broken section and had to rebuild it ourselves. Since we don't have a scroll saw for more intricate wood carving, we ended up using a few pieces of scrap wood that had a similar shape to the other legs. We cut the pieces to size, secured them with wood glue, and clamped them in place. When the glue was dried, we reinforced it a bit more with a few screws. We ended up with a pretty good matching leg, and once it's painted, you'll barely be able to tell that this section wasn't part of the original piece. After we repaired the legs, we also added hard plastic furniture leg sliders. Moving furniture without these on can cause scratches on floors, and also will cause the legs to loosen or even break. That's likely what happened to this piece previously. Before priming and painting, we always tape the insides of our drawer openings. This is an easy way to get crisp lines and give a more professional look. For this set, we used Beauty Tone Stick It. It's better than a primer, but also more expensive because it's an adhesive. It even says in the can that you don't actually have to sand it all, but we still like to do it anyways. 
We used a brush to get the stick it into the corners and the grooves. And then we used a roller for easier coverage on the flat areas. We repeated this process for the tall boy as well. We used our Wagner Flexio sprayer to paint three coats of our beauty tone cabinet and furniture paint in the color New Cream. You can use a brush or roller to paint as well, but we like to use our sprayer since it's a lot faster. It also gives a smoother finish without brush strokes or roller dimples. We like to remove the tape when the paint is still wet. Pulling at a 45 degree angle gives us crisp lines by avoiding smudging. Now that the frame is complete, it's time to move over to the drawers, and there's more sanding to be done. Since the drawers are going to be stained, they need to be sanded down to bare wood. We used our Festool and an 80 grit sandpaper for the first run. We love our Festool Rotex. It's an amazing sander that removes any top surface, including paints, stains, polyurethanes. It's done quickly with little effort. Once the initial sand was complete, we switched to a 120 grit sandpaper for another pass to get rid of some of the leftover blotchiness. The main feature of this project will be the stained drawers, so it's extremely important to ensure that the surface was well prepped and smooth. Everyone always says, when you think you're done sanding, sand some more, and this has always been true for us. So we took out our rigid sander and did another pass with a 220 grit sandpaper. Now to the fun part. Time to pick our ombre stains. We lined up our stains from the darkest to the lightest and used a wood strip to sample each of the colors. Once the stains on our test strip were dry, we went through and selected our favorites. We were searching for colors that had enough difference between them to see the ombre effect, but also had a similar hue. They weren't too reddy or too yellow so that they'd complement each other on the drawers. The tall boy dresser had five drawers, requiring five different stain colors from lightest at the top to darkest at the bottom. The low boy dresser only needed three variations, so we decided to use the colors from the top, middle, and bottom drawer of the tall boy to ensure a more cohesive set. If you're looking for more information on how we created these ombre drawers, from the colors we used to more tips and tricks along the way, feel free to check out our how-to video which is linked in the description below. Once the stain had dried, we applied a polyurethane top coat for protection. We had a difficult time picking hardware for these pieces. On the left, a metal hardware that we had painted in rose gold. And on the right, a custom made wooden pull. Each of them would be stained the color of the drawer. We couldn't decide, so we went to Instagram for a little bit of help. 70% of our followers had said they liked the metal rose gold handles, so that's what we went with. The final step was to spray paint and attach the rest of the hardware. And here's the final product. We're so happy with the modern flair that we gave to this vintage set. The waterfall ombre drawers was exactly what we were envisioning for this set, and we can't wait to use this technique on more pieces in the future. Let us know what you think and ask us any questions in the comments below. See you, See you next weekend. weekend.